I come from a very poor country uh, and uh, almost automatically uh, one has to be interested in poverty and inequality uh, as, as a professional uh, economist. I specifically uh, got interested in this idea of uh, aspirations and uh, behavioral issues for two reasons. The first one is this uh, claim a lot of people make about Ethiopians, and that is Ethiopians are considered, particularly poor Ethiopians, are deemed fatalistic. The idea is uh, that uh, they seem to display this acceptance of their uh, state or they do not seem to proactively attempt change to change their, uh, their future. Uh, my uh, premise, however, is that Ethiopians are not necessarily more fatalistic than, than any other group of people. So I, I thought there must be another explanation which appears as fatalistic but is driven by another uh, mechanism which uh, led me to aspirations. The second reason is the fact that a lot of development uh, analysis and practice focus on opportunities. Uh, the poor are not progressing because they lack Opportunities. They don't have capital, they don't have education, they don't uh, have access to markets, they don't have access to uh, public services and similar uh, characterizations of opportunities or limits to the opportunities they have. And these are valid reasons and they get emphasis and they deserve that uh, emphasis. But the, the perspective they give, in my view, is partial for two reasons. First, even when there are opportunities, he, there is now enough evidence that they may uh, remain unexploited. Second, and perhaps more importantly, opportunities are not static. They are created. The development process is nothing else but the creation of opportunities in, if one wants to summarize, to summarize it. So uh, it is important to look at uh, the problems people, particularly the poor, face in exploiting opportunities and the process of creating opportunities and the aspiration framework uh, allows us to address some of this. There are a number of uh, challenges in uh, designing uh, such a uh, uh, study, and, uh, but I'll focus on two uh, because they are particularly relevant to the empirical side of the uh, problem. Uh, we can summarize them as measurement problem and the identification problem. In terms of measurement, the key challenge is that we don't observe aspirations. They are goals people set for themselves and uh, they generally do not uh, uh, reveal them, uh, uh, we cannot observe them. Uh, there are two ways of therefore getting at aspirations. The first is to look at how people behave, their choices, and try to infer from the choices they make their aspirations. Well, this is problematic, of course, because then it is very difficult to explain their choice in terms of the, in their initial aspirations. Because now we are using this, these choices as indicators or measures or uh, revealed aspirations. So this interpretation challenge uh, comes into play. We cannot explain choice. In fact, this is related to, more generally, the revealed preference uh, 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 approach in economics. So what is the second option? The second option is to actually ask people what their aspirations are. There are problems here too. So uh, we w first one was to, re to try to get revealed aspirations. Now we get declared aspirations. And the quality 
and accuracy of these declared aspirations depend on, uh, may depend on the characteristics of the subjects themselves or the instruments used to gather this information. So both have challenges. And the solution we opted for was to actually ask the people. But before we do so, we systematically uh, validated the instrument we use for uh, that purpose. So that was the first challenge. The second challenge is the identification challenge or the identification problem. And the identification problem is a problem essentially because aspirations and choice are always existing together in the person. So how can we separate the two and try uh, to uh, use, to explain one in terms of uh, the other? Uh, and all this, of course, for instance, a more aspirant person could be more successful, or a more successful person could be more aspirant. So what we need to do is to introduce some inter change or intervention. We need to observe change. And that change has to be independent of what is existing there. And uh, what uh, we have done is to uh, uh, have a series of uh, successful, to document success stories of people that are of similar uh, nature to our subjects, so rural residents who, are, who were successful without, without support from the government or from uh, uh, external NGOs and so on, uh, document them, prepare documentaries, and use screening these documentaries as an exogenous and independent intervention uh, to affect uh, to affect the aspirations of our subjects. We also have accumulated a panel data from another source, and uh, that also would uh, enable separation of the past from the present. And uh, using these two, we attempt to uh, solve that integration problem. Well, uh, three basic outcomes. Uh, the first is that, as expected, people's aspirations depend on their life experiences and uh, the uh, circumstances within which they, uh, they uh, live. And the broader uh, mental model, more mental models, they develop on the basis of these experiences and circumstances. How they see the world, how they perceive themselves, and different uh, economic opportunities they had and uh, exploited determine their aspirations, their nature, and if you like, level of their aspirations. That's the first uh, finding. The second important finding is that the poor are less aspirant. The poor have lower aspirations, which means that the incidence of poverty, the frequency and depth of poverty would among other things, make people less aspiring. Uh, they have a narrower view of the world, a narrower perspective on their opportunities and their, uh, their abilities. And third, the fact that a person has a lower aspiration is correlated with some of the choices he or she makes. Uh, in particular in our rural farming communities, they, people with lower aspirations are less likely to use modern inputs such as fertilizers and uh, improved seeds. They are also less uh, likely to send their kids to school. And there is some limited evidence that uh, uh, nutritional outcomes of their children may be negatively affected uh, if they are uh, low aspiring. The ultimate result, poverty. They remain po poor, so poverty and inequality persist. Well, uh, a lot of growth uh, is happening uh, in Ethiopia for the last 10 uh, years or so. 
and this is bringing about uh, losers and uh, gainers, obviously. Uh, some gain more out of that than others, and uh, a key lack of understanding or lack of knowledge at the moment is to what extent the losers are losing and what can be what can be uh, done about it because the different measures of inequality uh, are increasing in in levels uh, and uh, it is in some sense uh, an outcome to be expected when there is rapid growth so the trick is to try to understand the, 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 the channels and try to uh, provide appropriate solutions, including safety nets, retraining, education, and the like. Uh, industrial development is not my, my area, but a general, a general point. Uh, I think a transforming economy should have a dynamic industrial sector. Uh, one of the uh, challenges of having this transition is how uh, to create significant amount of employment within industry, which is getting increasingly capital intensive. We have a large and growing population. A lot of it is still in rural areas. There would be increasing productivity in such uh, sector would lead to released labor. Uh, and the uh, industrial sector has to grow faster and absorb more. Uh, that has yet to happen, and that is an important uh, challenge, uh, which is to have a growing industrial sector which can at the same time create employment and help uh, reduce poverty and inequality. So, uh, if you look at the uh, numbers, that uh, uh, gross numbers, uh, the initial uh, of the last, say, 12, 13 years, initial growth uh, came from agriculture, partly in the form of recovery. Uh, and the fact that it is the largest sector until very recently means that that will have a significant impact on average, uh, on average growth. So, it drives, drives uh, growth. Of course, there is a second uh, uh, element, which is that it provides food and uh, uh, raw materials to uh, other sectors. The linkage, particularly with industry, is not particularly strong. It is there, uh, but that in part reflects uh, the limited productivity of both, both sectors. So uh, in the future, with more dynamic uh, industry, uh, a more uh, demand uh, from agriculture will emerge and the interlinkage will uh, strengthen. The key is that uh, uh, a lot of the population is still in uh, rural areas and what happens in agriculture is not only in terms of growth but also in terms of well-being of the population is a significant uh, component. So at the personal level, but, but the perspective, personal perspective I have about wider is that it is one of the few uh, institutions which does very good research in standard topics, but also at the same time allows significant flexibility in terms of entertaining innovative, novel ideas. Uh, a lot of issues that would may not be discussed or uh, researched in standard economics departments are, are uh, uh, dealt with uh, here. And coming from a poor country, that's a very, a very uh, important, uh, important uh, dimension. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, it was one of the first places that we actually presented this aspiration when at the aspiration project when we were at a, an ideas level. There was very little empirical, empirical uh, 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 empirical support, and it's one of those few, therefore, institutions which uh, which entertains uh, these uh, innovative uh, ideas. And the development problem is protracted and complex, and we have to be able to look at all possible options. There is no one formula 
of uh, dealing with uh, or bringing about development. So we need uh, we need uh, an institution like wider uh, to help that process along. Mm -hmm.